So we've managed to narrowly avoid another deadly encounter with the Scissor Man. And one can only assume that with his drop from such a great height that maybe we've gotten a bit of a reprieve from having to deal with him for a little bit. And since we do have time and we are in a new area of the mansion, we might as well go ahead and start looking around because... Well, it seems like we've stumbled into where they store all of their art. It's got all these lovely statues and it's got this... Really bizarre looking unframed uh, picture on the wall here. Has a very fleshy texture to it, almost like a scab that's healed over. But outside of all of this art, there is one accessible door that we can enter in and explore. And it's a bit hard to see. It looks like they store some stuff here, but maybe we can turn on the light. Hmm. I guess we should have taken that hole in the floor to be some kind of indication that maybe this isn't the most upkept part of the mansion, but we can still look around just a little bit. It does look like they store a few odds and ends here, such as some more paintings and some more crockery for uh, hosting dinner parties, I assume. But what's most notable in here is it's a bit hard to see, but the wall here is well, it's a slightly different color. And even Jennifer finds this a bit strange. Maybe we can investigate a bit more by moving this pallet and all these crates. And upon further investigation, it does seem like this part of the wall has been replastered, though they didn't do much of a good job when they were doing it. Still, my curiosity is getting the better of me, and I do want to see what might be hiding behind this freshly plastered portion of wall. Let's see, what can we use? Well, there does seem to be this nearby pipe here. Could be a handy tool. Yeah, it appears that someone wasn't just trying to hide a crack in the wall, but seemingly a doorway to another room. And then, as one could imagine, from a room that's probably been blocked up for quite some time, the air is very heavy and it's very dark in here, but there are a few things that we can investigate on the ground here in the darkness. First being a medical record involving two newborn babies. Now, as to why this is in here... Well, maybe this other piece of paper here on the ground could shed some more light on that. It's another medical record, but this time around it's for a female patient named Mary Burroughs. Now, we do know that Burroughs is the name of the owner of the house, but we haven't been introduced to any female members of the family, especially not named Mary. The only Mary we know is our uh, our teacher, Miss Mary. And, well, it's a bit hard to make out, but there there's also a doctor's bag here. Case. 
I can assume that's where all these papers came from, but more importantly, there is a name embroidered. Walter Simpson. Yeah, Simpson just happens to be Jennifer's last name, and yep, this medical bag is from her missing father. Now, it's even harder to make out, but here in the corner seems to be some skeletal remains, and well, you might be able to put two and two together here to figure out just who this might be. But yeah, the corpse is holding a piece of paper, and this memo is going to be very important to the plot, as this is pretty much the last will and testament of Walter Simpson. Jennifer's father. Yeah, it seems that good old Walter Simpson here, having been trapped here for a number of days, decided to recount just what had brought him to the Burroughs Mansion over nine or ten years ago, and that was because he was called in to help deliver the, Bur the, the twin babies for what I'm assuming is Mary Burroughs. The problem is that these babies were some horrible monstrosity, a blight to this world, as the doctor puts it. And upon delivering these two hellspawn, either one or both of them managed to eat the doctor's right hand. Yeah, they were horrible, deformed babies, and they apparently had fully ingrown teeth and a hunger for flesh. But he was unable to stop them from coming into the world, and instead... He found himself imprisoned in this room, much like Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado. But as the air finally ran out in the room, and Walter succumbed to suffocation, his last thoughts were for his daughter, Jennifer, who now cradles his corpse in the Burroughs Mansion. So yeah, that is a whole lot of plot to get in one sealed room. We find out just what caused uh, Jennifer here to become an orphan. And we now have some inkling about just what kind of evil is going on in this mansion. Though we are still a bit unsure about uh, what happened with these horrible monstrous twins. I guess we could assume that maybe one of them is the Scissor Man, or... Both of them could very well be the Scissor Man, considering how well he's able to maneuver around the uh, the mansion at will and seemingly get ahead of us. Still, it does leave in question about the mother and the father, who I assume we still have not seen yet, even though maybe we don't know everything we could about Miss Mary. Still, for right now... We have managed to cover a very large portion of the backstory and plot, but there is one slightly larger problem here. And that's, well, there's no further way to go down that hallway. And, yeah, we can't really get back across that hole just yet. Also, it's interesting to know that you know, what I thought was originally a painting on the wall is actually the the attempts, I assume, of Mr. Burroughs to cover up that plastered-up room. Yeah, it doesn't appear that Jennifer is up for trying to jump across here. And, well, it may not seem immediately evident what you have to do here. We can investigate the statue, and it, it does confuse Jennifer initially, but you might recall long ago we did manage to pick up some rope, and I'm assuming that the statue should be heavy enough to support us. And we should hopefully be able to spelunk our way back down to the first floor. Now you might be wondering what happens if you manage to jump over here while being chased. Man, you haven't gotten the rope, and well, you'd be stuck and you'd have to start all the way back over again. But more importantly, it appears that while we were learning about our missing father... Uh, Scissor Man has decided to scamper off somewhere, so maybe he isn't in such dire shape. But, 
I guess we should go ahead and keep exploring. We still have some of our friends to find, and we still have to find our way out of the mansion. And I don't think there's going to be a way out in this library, but maybe if we shed some light, we can read. Though that's obviously not really going to be an option. Getting feeling like most of the lighting in this place is not really going to be working for our advantage. Still, we can find a few pieces of information here. The first being in this bookshelf here. There is a stray piece of paper. And on this piece of paper, there is a oddly worded riddle that talks about maybe losing uh, focus on things that, you know, might be in plain sight because you lose track of it in the bigger picture. Namely, we want to pay attention to the fact that it said that there was a statue among statues. This will become very important in just a second, but... Otherwise, there's not too much of interest in this room. There's a few books with uh, some odd symbols. And I guess some engineering and technical books. But the one last interesting piece of flavor that we can get in this room are these magazines on the floor here. Because they are maternity magazines. I guess that's to give you a further hint in regards to someone being pregnant in the house, in case you haven't stumbled across that hidden room yet. Also, there is a bizarre hole in the wall. Seems like there might be something shiny in the, uh, in the hole itself, but we don't really have a way to, means to get to it. does is trigger a spooky howl in the distance, so well, we got what we needed in here, so I guess we'll just keep on pressing on. You know, speaking of statues, well, there are quite a few statues in this general area, so it could very well be that 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 clue and that riddle was maybe meaning something to do with these statues. Well, we'll probably figure that out a little bit more. We're almost done investigating this wing of the house. It's another room that's a bit hard to make out. It looks... Maybe like some kind of kitchen or storage area. Let's let's try the light. All right, may, maybe that was a bad idea. Let's let's uh let's turn off the light in the horribly horrible noise. We definitely don't want to attract anybody's attention with that really horrible racket, but. Yeah, it looks like whatever is being held in these cages is affected by the light. And in some of the cages we find a large number of rats just running about, but in another set of cages over here, we do manage to find a single lone crow. Now... So far, we've had some pretty bad luck with birds, but I don't know. We could have better luck this time around, and we do have that birdcage key we picked up off that moving corpse a while ago, so let's go ahead and set it free. Why not? We managed to be rewarded for our good deed by not being pecked or murdered to death. And it even gives Jennifer a moment to reflect on the fact that, you know, if she had wings to spread, she would certainly use them to fly away from this horrible mansion. 
But this is a pretty grisly room all around. Festooned on the wall seems to be a number of decapitated crow bodies. And it's a bit hard to tell, but there is something else on the table here. is a much more grisly, intense picture of a decapitated crow. Yeah, in the original version of the game, that decapitated crow there on the table was where you would get the key, and instead of that horrific picture, they just vaguely described it so. Yeah, another slight improvement, I guess, in the, in the PS1 version, but... Well, you know, since we're already in this area of the mansion... No, there. I still am curious about this whole statue thing. And we've looked into all these statues down here, but there were still a few upstairs to investigate, so might as well make our way back up there. But you might be wondering how we're supposed to get all the way back across that hole. Now, the... Uh, the avid eye viewer might already be able to tell how we're going to do that. But yeah, that uh, that piece of wood, that simple plank on the wall there, is going to be our means to get across. And if we had not been chased by the scissor man earlier, we could have easily just placed this plank across here and not had to use that rope in the first place. It's just all a matter of whether or not you're being chased by the scissor man. Yeah, let's see. Quite a few statues up here, but we don't have to travel too far before we notice a new investigatable area on this statue. And wouldn't you know it, it happens to have a hidden compartment where a small, horrific-looking statue was hiding. A very cold to this touch statue with a small cross embedded in the bottom. Yeah, this is going to be very important for our progression in the game. But, you know, we already had to trek all the way back up and down stairs and up and down a rope, so... Yeah, with all our being chased by the scissor man, we did end up skipping a few final rooms up here on the second floor, so... Let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit and see what we missed. Now the first door up here that we run across holds a very familiar looking room. And yeah, this is another portion of the collapsed hallway. Now it's a bit hard to discern initially because we're in a 2D plane, but yeah, this collapsed hallway is, in actuality, just the upper portion of that first collapsed hallway we ran to the second, or, you know, the first video. The, they're all pretty much interconnected, but I think it's supposed to allude to the fact that there is supposed to be a much simpler way to get it, you know, from one side of the mansion to the other, but due to something horrible happening in, you know, previous eras of the mansion, yeah, there was just a massive cave-in blocking reasonable access. Also, I mentioned before that this, uh, this study here was not really a prime hiding location. And as we scroll over, we can see why. There's just not that much to it, and yeah, from the dust that has accumulated on the desk, one can only assume that no one really uses this study except does appear that someone has recently lit the fire for some reason. Still, there's just oddly nothing to this room. I feel like it's just another place to easily get cornered by the scissor man. But our main point of attention is this first room that we ran through to avoid the scissor man. And it's 
Well, a bit hard to tell with all of the destruction that's gone in on in here, but yeah, this seems to have been a child's nursery. There are destroyed to toys thrown about here and there. There's some hung from the ceiling. And there's even a small bed here, which, you know, from the looks of it, has not only been not used in some time, but also just torn apart. If anything, we just kind of further understand from this room that at some point there might have been children here. Except they were very, very violent children. But our primary reason for coming in here is pretty hard to find. It's on top of this toy chest here, and it is a key. But it's a key that we are not going to be easily, or going to be able to easily abscond with. Instead, we are going to have to use our quick wits to figure out how to destroy this evil floating devil doll. But Jennifer just has to use her head. Yeah. Uh, not much of a danger. I mean, if you don't react to that panic situation, I, I guess you could be stabbed, but... Hey, that, I mean, we, we survived, I guess. So, uh, that's the second floor. Let's, let's, let's go on back to the first floor. Now... As you can probably imagine, the, the first floor pretty much mirrors the second floor in this wing of the mansion. Even this door here is going to lead to the other end of that collapsed hallway that we saw upon the second and first floor. These lower set of doors are going to lead to some pretty different locations. First being a, well, somewhat innocuous looking room. And that really doesn't have too much going on with it, just some broken glass, and, well, to be quite honest, I, I don't actually know the purpose of this room. As far as I've been able to tell, this room wasn't really accessible in the Super Nintendo version, and only became unlocked in the PS1 version. Maybe it allows another place to hide from the Scissor Man. I'm not fully aware. But the next door here still holds something a little bit more fruitful to us. Namely, a very macabre... ritual room, I suppose? And what draws my attention most is this pentagram on the floor, because... Well, amongst that scribbled memo from Jennifer's father, it did mention something about a cradle under the star. When you know it, there seems to be some weird indention here in the star. It gives the feeling like there might be some passage leading underneath it. The question is, how do we open it? Now, there are a few other points of interest to look at in this room. Such as this lovely flower vase here in the corner. And while it may seem like a simple vase. At the bottom of it, we do see a strange hole. Now, we don't really have anything we can place in there that I know of. There are a few more items here on the altar. First of which being 
Yet another decapitated crow body. Can only assume this is why they would, you know, require all those other decapitated crows in that other room or storing them. Guess they were all part of this mysterious ritual. In addition to that, there seems to be some incantation here. Something about time made to adhere. Maybe something regarding that huge clock tower that looms over the entire mansion. But our main point of interest here is this iron disc, as it has a cross-shaped marking in it. And when you know it, we did manage to stumble across a demon idol with a cross cut into the bottom of it. And as you can imagine, fits right perfectly in there. And that is our means to head down, down underneath the cradle of the star, under the star. Now, while I would be hard-pressed to stay in this mansion, I... There are a few other odds and ends I want to go ahead and cover. I mean, we have pretty much explored almost every room in the mansion at this point, but well, there are, you know, a few rooms left and a few items we want to go ahead and get out of the, our inventory. I think there is only one more doorway to look into on this particular hallway. We're in luck. It's well, a much nicer, you know, sunnier version of that other bathroom we ran across. Had Laura's horribly mangled body in it. And the good thing is, there's absolutely nothing to this room. Oh, except a cat scared. Yeah, I think there might be one other room that you can run across this mysterious black cat hiding away to give uh, Jennifer a little spook. Yeah, otherwise, there's really not too much to this bathroom. I think it might just be another hiding spot in case you are being chased by the Scissor Man. Yeah, I think we are nearly almost done with the first floor. There's just one more far, far room to investigate at the end of the hallway here. And if you might recall, this hallway does have a parallel on the second floor. And up on the second floor was where we ran into that taxidermy room and that Walking corpse, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. And much the same way that the overall layout seems to have a parallel, there is a room on the far end here that... I would say maybe thematically has some parallel to the taxidermy room. Except instead of animal taxidermy, we have... Human taxidermy. Well, it's it's not that grisly. They're just, you know, simple mannequins with their lifeless eyes and judging faces. But, I mean, some of them have all these extremely lovely dresses and they just look absolutely exquisite. You'll simply lose your head over how lovely they look. Otherwise, though, there's really nothing to this room. And that 
that's why we should leave it as quickly as possible. Because we've now explored almost every room that is unlocked to us, but well, you might remember, well, first off, that there were two locked doors. And there was a shiny object here waiting in the freezer, but first things first, we have to make sure and make it safe for us. Yeah, and after dealing with those horrible bugs, we have found the golden key. And if you recall, both of those locked doors were fairly close to the kitchen. They were just out in that second foyer. And I guess since we're already on the first floor, we might as well go ahead and check out that locked door on the first floor. Yeah, also of note is the fact that even though we've probably been running around for two plus hours, there's still that phone ringing. And believe it or not, we finally managed to find just where that ringing phone was coming from. Yeah, we could have gotten in here a lot earlier, tried to use this phone a lot earlier, but I guess if we did, it would kind of given us a bit of false hope. Because yeah, the telephone line has been cut for probably some large amount of time. Now as to whether or not this ringing is something supernatural or possibly just a recording, it's a bit hard to tell, but... Well, more importantly, it does look like someone was in here somewhat recently. And probably in their haste have managed to leave behind another new key for us. Now, we're not really certain who this might be, but I think we're given something of a hint in the near nearby wardrobe here. And the fact that there seems to be some women's clothing sitting inside. Well, I'm sure we'll figure that out a little bit further on. But for right now, let's go ahead and use that second key. And stumble across a very interesting mural in a somewhat minimalistic library, I'd say. It's a bit hard to completely make out what's going on in the mural here. It seems like some people are worshipping. There might be a bull and some mist and a crow. Yeah, we can't make out all of it because this bookshelf here is in the way, but... Yeah, for for very particular reasons, we're not going to be able to move that bookshelf during this playthrough. We, we should be able to in the future. But for the most part, we don't really need to come to this this mural room. There are a few additional hints that we can get in here, such as the fact that there, there is something very important about the clock tower, and in one of the other bookshelves we can get the uh, the demon idol riddle again, but yeah, this, this room is more important whenever some other criteria is met during a playthrough. We'll see that later. 
For right now, though, we have covered every possible room in the mansion. And all that leaves for us is to finally head down and see just what this cradle under the star is. But, you know, this has felt like a pretty safe update all around, and Jennifer hasn't been in too much horrible danger, so... I figured I would show that, well, depending on uh, depending on certain random actions, you might run into a little bit of danger. Yeah, sometimes when you head into the telephone room here, we run into Miss Mary, who we haven't seen in forever, and I mean, I'm glad she's doing okay. She seems pretty happy to see us as well. But, yeah, things take an odd turn 